Hey, hello everyone. So this is Teacher Shoei from Pink Teach Academy. Today I'll be going through a very short video and I would like to focus on before change after fraction under the fraction ratio percentage topic. So FRP, as you see over here, represents fraction ratio percentage. And the reason why I decided to focus on this is because I noticed that even at this juncture up to now, there are few students who are not able to apply this method BCA, before change, before change after, consistently in the examination. And it's such a waste because BCA is basically the most universally used um, solution when it comes to FRP questions. Okay, and today I'm going to show you how we can apply this consistently to make sure that you never make, uh, that you're confident when applying BCA to any FRP questions. Okay, so before I before we begin, um, you may be able to find a downloadable, downloadable link for this worksheet so they can attempt before class. If not, while I'm going through this worksheet, you can also pause before I go through to try to solve the question on your own. Okay, now let's begin with just some pointers to note when you want to use this BCA method. Okay, and this is something that I see a lot of students uh, not understanding this well enough, right? Now, the first thing is that I only want to see parts and units. Okay? Okay, what I want to see, number one, parts and units. Number two, I want to see numbers only. Okay? Maybe decimal. Okay? So as far as possible, I will not encourage the use of decimals um, in terms of like, for example, 2.5u, okay? As far as possible, I will not encourage this because you can simply multiply everything by 10 to work with 25u. But some of you, if you're good at dealing with decimals, you can use decimals if you want to, okay? What do I not want to see, right? No fractions, no percentage. Okay, a lot of students, sometimes when you state your ratio, you will miss out the parts, the units. You just give the numbers in terms, the, the ratio in terms of numbers. And this can be very dangerous because you need to use parts and units to indicate whether the proportions are referring to the same thing or not. Okay, the three steps when applying the PCA method. Okay, this is the three P's that I teach over at Think Teach Academy or what I tell my teachers to ensure that students are doing. Okay, the three P's. Okay, the first P is what we call, you present. What are you presenting? You are presenting the information in a table. Okay, so you read the question, go up your table and start putting in the ratio. Start putting the parts, the units and numbers, that's it. That's all I need, first step, present, right? Whatever you see in the question, you just present those data inside the table. Number two, process. The next step is where it becomes more important, where you have to look at the table and other information in the question to think about what you have to process information, information and think about what else must you do to help you to solve the question. And some of these steps maybe require you to reset the ratio. Some of these steps maybe require you to um, solve for units. Okay. And the last step, right, the moment you can do one and two, that's where you, have, you, you will have clarity of how to solve the question. And the last step is what I call proceed to solve. Okay, so for example, how do you know that you have reached the last step? Usually when you're able to reach a stage where you have five U equals to one, two, five, for example. Okay, and that, that means that you are there already. You have already used the PCA table to achieve the objective and therefore you can proceed to solve. Okay, so we have eight questions today. I will start off with some easier questions to warm us up, okay? And then we will end off with something a little bit more challenging. Throughout the eight questions, you will realize that what I'll be doing is I'll be applying what I've mentioned here very consistently across every question, okay? So let's start with the first question. Okay, this was taken from the 2019 MGS prelims question. Okay, so first step. How do you present the information in the table? Very simple. 
male is still female at the top. Of course, you have your BCA table, right? The first thing is, it is one is a five. Remember, I want to see one U. I want to see five U, okay? The next step is 25% um, of the male participants and 60% of the female participants did not make it to the second round. So just by, this is part one. This is where you are just presenting the information that you have. Now that that's all you have, the next step is all processing. What do you mean processing? So you're going to see this number 25% and you're going to see a 60%, okay? The rule, the general rule is to always convert the percentages into a fraction, okay? Convert the percentages into fraction. Okay, so now you have one quarter of the male participants did not make it the second round, which will be the change, and three fifths of the female did not make it the second round. All right, so the process, processing this information would enable you to realize that you can't work with one unit, right? Because a quarter of one unit will get you a decimal or a fraction. So what you want to do here is to restate this into four units. When you do that to the to one side, you have to do to the other side. And that's where you can apply one quarter of one unit, which is minus one U. I will end up with three units. Three fifths of 20 units would be minus 12 units. And I will end up with eight units. Okay, remember early on I said the third step, proceed to solve. How do I know that you can proceed to solve? Okay, they say there were 15 more female than male participants. If you look at what I've achieved here, this will tell you that 5u equals to 15. There you go, right? So you just can, you can just solve for units and then um, solve for anything that you want in this table, right? In this question, they're asking for the ratio of the female to the male participants in the second round, and your answer would be 3 to 8. Okay, sorry. 8 is a 3 since they want the female to female first. Okay, so this is just a very simple example. Let's move on to the next question. This is, that, this was the, this is an actual 2019 ITOM prelims. So again, I'm going to just present the data here in the BCA table. Okay, who are the subjects here? Boys and girls. Again, I'll have my B, C, A. Now let's see. Uh, ratio 4 is a 5. Okay, so I'm going to put 4U. It's a 5U. After 170 boys left, okay, minus 170, and 20% of the girls went back. Okay, so this is as far as you can as you can go with presenting the information there, right? Because the next step here requires you to process this bit over here. Okay, 20% of the girls converted to fraction. It tells you it's one fifth. If you apply one fifth to five units, you get minus one U, which tells you that the after for the girls is for you. Okay, if you continue to read in this question, they say that after everything, the ratio of the boys to the girls became one is to two. Okay, so if you look at what you have right here, girls after is really four units. And if the ratio is one to two, it simply tells you that the boys after has to be two units. Okay. And once you're able to complete this table, you will realize that two units is actually 170. And this is a part where you know you can just proceed to solve. Right, the moment you have X number of units equals to whole number, proceed to solve. What is the question asking? How many children were there in the hall in the end? They are looking for six units. So six units is just 170 times three, you get 510. Okay. Now let's look at Question three, okay, again, the same thing, right? So let's have a look at, um, okay, so if you look at this question, you can't Amos and sister, right? B, C, A, okay, you can't really present the information here without doing some, um, some manipulation of the data you have here, right? So for example, again, I see 25%, I am going to convert this to one quarter, 70%. I'm going to convert this to seven over 10. So let's look at the first piece of information. This is where you start processing. Huh? If Amos spent one quarter of the office money, that means that I can allow Amos to be for you at the start. I spent one U, I'm left with three U. Okay, you'll notice that this question 
it's a bit different from the, four, the previous questions because in the previous two questions, the proportions were given um, together for before and after. Now, the proportion is actually given um, vertically downwards. Okay, so the sister spent 710, which means, again, okay, sister, I can allow sister to be 10p, right? Since it's 7 over 10, I'll let sister be 10p. The change here would be the 7p and sister will have an after of 3p. Okay, so if you continue to read the question, they said Amos had twice as much money left as her sister. Okay, so right now, if you look at the after, it is 3u is 2. 3p twice tells us that Amos should be 6p over here. Okay, that means that I have to multiply one all the units by two. So now instead of minus one u, I get minus two p. Instead of eight u, I get eight p. Okay, so you're done with presenting, processing the pro, you know, and lastly proceed to solve. How do I know that I can proceed to solve? Because if you look at the numbers given to you. Amos and his sister shared 1,674. This tells you that 18p is equal to 1,674. You are good. Okay, find what is 1p, right? Thankfully, 1p gives you a whole number which tells you that you're correct, you're on the right track, right? Usually, if 1p gives you a very good decimal place, then you know maybe somewhere that's a mistake. Okay, the question is asking how much did Amos have in the end? Amos had 6p in the end. So 6p equals to 5, 5, 8. Okay, straightforward, right? Okay, so now let's look at um, question four. Okay, so again, who are the two subjects? Boys, girls, B, C, A. Okay, now this question is slightly different. Huh? It's slightly different because instead of giving proportion, they tell you that there were 160 more boys than girls in the audience. Okay, so how should you be presenting this piece of information? You could, right, you could just allow boys to be one unit. Okay, so if boys is one U, plus 160 and girls is one unit. Sorry, I meant you can allow girls to be one unit and boys to be one unit plus 160. In fact, girls can be any number of units. If you want girls to be 10 units, 100 units, 1,000 units, you can do so. So long as boy also has the same number of units and the additional 160 because that would, this would be mathematically correct. Okay, now then look at the change. The boys decreased by 15%. 15% is also 3 over 20. The girls increased by 20%, which is also 1 fifth. So I would then be required to restate the ratio, the units, right, into a number that allows me to apply the, the change in terms of fraction. So right now, the denominator of the boys is actually 20, right? So it will be safe for me to restate this to 20u, right? And 20u, right? It still remains as plus 160, remember? Because girls can be anything as long as boys has the same number of units plus 120. Okay, so now that we've restated the ratio, let's apply the fraction, okay? So three over 20 of 20 units, of course, it means minus three units. Okay, the next step here is that a lot of students will forget to also apply 3 over 20 onto 160. Okay, they will forget about whole numbers. So they'll continue and it'll give me this. They will say, oh, you know, one fifth of uh, 20 units minus 4 u. Right, and then they'll say, okay, this is going to be 17 u plus 160, and this is going to be 16 u. Okay, I have seen this every year students always make the same mistake, okay? So you do not, you know, you do not overlook the fact that you have to also apply 320 to the whole numbers. So 3 over 20 of 160 is minus 24. And hence, instead of plus 160, it should be plus 136. So this is how you finish up your BCA table, okay? 
So we're done with step one, step two, you have presented, you have processed information, you have processed the change in terms of uh, fraction to recognize that you have to reset the ratio to 20 and 20. Then you apply the fraction. Now let's see whether we can proceed to solve. How do we do that? Okay, they said there were 1,489 children on the second day. Right, so they are referring to everything here. Okay, okay, sorry, I just realized that uh, for girls, it is actually increased by 20%, so it's plus four units. Okay, so this is gonna be um, 24 units. Okay, so everything here will, will add up to 1,489. It tells you that 41U plus 136 equals to 1489. Okay, 41U will be equal to 1353, right? So usually when you have such weird numbers, right? 41U, 1353, you know that you're probably safe if you are able to get a whole number. And thankfully you, should, you can, right? So 1U is 33. Find a number of boys and audience in second day. So they want you to find 17U plus 136. So 17U. Plus 136, you punch this into your calculator, you will get 697. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Okay, uh -huh. so this was the 2018 Arches Prelims question. You'll notice that it's very similar to the question we did before. Okay, again, what you're looking at is one, two, five more women. So if I were to put men into women, Right, B, C, A. Again, same thing. You can allow men to be one U, and woman will be one U plus one two five. Okay. Now let's look at the change. Over here, you have the changes presented one in fraction, one in percentage. Okay, but it doesn't matter because all you have to do is to convert forty percent to two fifth. So two fifths of the woman and three quarters of the men left the fat. In this case, the the ratio that you should be resetting the men in terms of units and two depends on the denominator of women as well as denominator of men. Since women, the denominator is five and men, the denominator is four, LCM of five and four is actually 20. So what I'll do here is then to reset men to 20 units, reset women to 20 units plus one to five. Okay, because after that, when I apply the, the fraction, two-fifths of the woman left the fat. Two-fifths of 20U is minus 8U. Okay, remember, you also have to apply the fraction to the whole number. So two-fifths of 125 is also 50. Okay, so three-quarter of 20 units would be minus 15U. So at the end, I'm going to have 5U here. I am going to have 12U plus 125 minus 50 is going to get me 75. The table is complete. It looks perfect. Okay, am I able to proceed to solve? Let's see. In this question, they stated there were 243 more women than men. Okay, so we're not quite done yet because now there's a second part to it. Okay, how do I solve this question? Okay, what I'll do first uh, is I will draw a model to represent this relationship. Very clearly, woman is more than men. So woman has a longer model than men. Okay, now, how much more, how much longer is this model, right? You can actually draw a dotted line here and this would represent 243, right? Since woman, uh, there were 243 more women than men. So what is this? length of this model represent for women. You'll realize that this would actually be 12 units plus 75. Okay, and for men, this is actually 5U, right? So why is the drawing of this model important? Because once you're able to, to, to draw the model to show women being more than men, and you're able to segment the model in terms of units, and numbers, you would realize that there's this overlap here, from here to here, okay? This overlap represents 7U, right? 12 minus five, at the same time, it is also two, four, three minus five. 
So 7u in fact is 168, which means 1u is 24. Now, what is the question asking for? How many men were there at the travel fair at first? Okay, so the question is asking for you to find what is 20u. So 1u is 24, 20u is 480. Okay, this was a fine marks prelims question. Uh, I can see how easy it, it, it was, you know, how easy it is to actually solve this question. Okay, nothing fancy food, everything that we have learned previously, sticking to the same pointers, uh, the, the fundamentals. I want to see your units, I want to see your parts, I want to see your numbers, right? I don't want to see percentage, I don't want to see any fraction. Okay? Okay, come. Let's look at this question. Question six. So let's present the information I have in the BCA table. Part one, present. First P, pre, right? Present. Okay, red is two blue buttons. Okay, B, C, A. I had a total of 452. I used half of the red buttons. Half means I start off with 2U, it changes minus 1U, I'm left with 1U. Make sense? Make sense. And I made and I used five over six blue patterns, right? So that means that I'm gonna start blue with six parts. And I used minus five parts, I am left with one part. Okay, so this is part one done. You have presented the information in a table. Right? So now move on to part two. How do you process the remaining information and what you have with you? So Look at the numbers. Mrs. Go had a total of 452 red and blue buttons altogether. So this tells me that 2u plus 6p is actually 452. Okay? And in the end, she had a total of 90. Right? So that means 1u plus 1p is equals to 90. Okay. Don't you realize that this is actually your simultaneous equation, okay? Simultaneous equation. And you also derive this by using the BCA table. So it's not wrong to use the BCA table because the proportions were given, there was a change, right? So you can use the BCA table to help you recognize that this is actually simultaneous equation. All right, so the moment you get to these two equations, for P6s at this stage, you know, when you're one week away, a couple, you know, one week away of PSLE, there is no reason why you're not able to solve this question, okay? So the question is asking for blue buttons have at first, which means you want to find what is 6P. If you want to find 6P, I want to get rid of the units. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply this by 2. This becomes 2U plus 2P equals to 180. I take the top equation minus the new equation I have, 4p equals to 452 minus 180 equals to 272. 1p equals to 68. They want to find blue buttons at first. 6p equals to 40. And that's your answer. Okay. Okay. We have come to our final two questions. All right. Okay. Question seven. Right, this came out in the uh, 2018 Rosite paper, essay one. Right, so again, let's present the information um, in a table. So, John and Isha. Okay, so John gave 30 percent. Okay, and Lisha then sold 50 percent. So, in this situation, um, this would tell me that this is. 310 and this is okay 5 over 10. Okay. Or okay, yeah, so 5 to 10. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I am gonna start John with 10 units right before. Okay, Lisha also 10 parts, right? The first change, okay, John gave 30% which means John minus 3U and Lisha plus 3U, okay? So 
the first after you realize that John will be left with seven units and Lisha would be 10p plus 3u. Okay, then the next thing was Lisha then sold 50% of her steps. Okay, which is 5 10 of the steps, half, half of the steps. So the second change, right, no change to John, but on Lisha's side, it should be minus 5p minus 1.5u, right? Because that's 50%, half. Okay, which means that you're going to arrive at, for John, since there was no change, it remains at 7u. For Lisha, now this becomes 5p plus 1.5u. Okay, so this is a bit quite different from the other questions that you've seen. What you realize here is that um, you have to make sure that everything is mathematically correct, right? Recognizing that John should be in terms of units and Lisha should be in terms of parts, that's the first thing. And then afterwards, you just apply you know, the, the change, right? The internal transfer of two units, or three units first, and then the selling of 50%, and make sure that everything is mathematically correct, okay? Now, let's look at the whole numbers that are given to you. John and Lisha had 260 steps, which tells you that 10U plus 10P is 2,160. Okay, they had 1,269 stamps in the end. If you look at what I have in the end, this tells me that 8.5U, Y.5, 7 plus 1.5 here, plus 5P is equals to over here, 1,269. Right, and you realize that this is again another simultaneous equation question. Okay, so the question is asking for how many stamps did John have in the end? So they want to find 7u, which means I need to get rid of the parts. So the first thing I'm going to do is to multiply this by 2. 8.5u will get me 17u. 5p will get me 10p. 1, 2, 6, 9 will get me 2, 5, 3, 8. Then I'm going to take this minus the first equation that I have above. Okay. And you realize that I will get 7u equals to 3, 7, 8. And that's actually your answer because you're looking for 7u. Okay, so you can see that BCA can also be used for you to derive the simultaneous equations that you require to really go and solve the question. Okay, if you're not able to derive these two equations, there's no way you can solve this question. Okay, and finally, 2018 Nanyang prelims. Okay, so in this situation, I have three items, right? I have orchids, I have tulips, I have rose. Let's see how I can present the data, the information on this table. Okay, nothing changes. B, C, A. Okay, present. Ratio occurred to tulips 3u is a 5u, right? After 40% of the orchids and one fifth of the tulips and 25% of the rules were sold, there are 2644. Okay, so for more challenging questions, you realize that in terms of the presenting part, they don't give you much leeway to, to work with, right? They really require you to process a lot of information in order to solve such questions, okay? So 40% of orchids tells me that this is two fifth. Okay, 25% of roses tells me that this is one quarter. Now, if I look at orchid right now, it's a three unit. So obviously, I need to restate this to 15 U, and hence, tulip has to be 25 U, right? Why? Because the number of units has to be a multiple of five. So that when I apply the when I apply two fifth to this, I can get a nice whole number of minus six U, and if I apply one fifth of tulips. I get minus 5u, that means that after here, I'm going to get 9u and 20u, right? So you notice that for orchids and tulips, for that, right? We have number one, restated the ratio for them. Number two, applied the change in terms of fractions and we've derived the after in terms of units. So let's look at roses. 25% or one quarter of the roses were sold. So like before, if I have one quarter of the roses sold, I'm going to start roses with 4p, Changes minus 1p after is 3p. Okay, and then 
That's kind of numbers. There were a total of 3,616, which means if I add everything up here, okay, 40U plus 4P is actually 3,616. Okay, and there were 3,644 flowers left in the end, which means I have to add everything up here, which tells me that 29U plus 3P equals to 2,644. Okay, I can see again, this is another example of simultaneous equation. Okay, how many orchids would there in the floor at first? So you want to find 15 units, which means I'm going to make, I'm trying to, I'm going to make parts the same, 12p, 12p. Okay, so that I can get rid of it. How do I get from 12p from the first equation and multiply by 3, second multiply by 4. So 40 units times 3, 120u plus 12p equals to 10848. 29u times 4, I get 116u plus 12p equals to 10576. Right? Then I take the top equation minus the bottom equation, right? You realize that I get 4u here. The p cancels out each other. By the top minus the bottom, I get 272. 4u equals to 272. 1u equals to 68. The question is asking for orchids at first, which is 15u. 15u equals to 1020. Okay, so there you go. We'll come to the end of this very, very short exercise. Just eight questions, right, to show you how you should be applying PCA consistently across any FRP questions, right? Keeping in mind the few key pointers. Number one, I want to see units, I want to see parts. Okay. Number two, I want to see numbers, right? You can work with decimals if you want to, right? And number three, more importantly, do not, I don't want to see percentage, I don't want to see fractions. Okay. And always the three steps to using BCA. Firstly, the first P, the three P's, right? Present the numbers, the data you have in the table first. Very simply, just putting it into the table. Right? And then once you're done, second set process, because there will always be a processing phase that requires you to make sense of the numbers, to restate ratio, to convert ratio. Right? It's always necessary. If not, you're not able to solve it. Right? And once you're able to process the information correctly, right? always make sure that it makes mathematical sense. Right? And you will be able to proceed to solve by either being able to arrive uh, to solve for units or derive two equations like this to solve using simultaneous equation. All right, okay. Thank you, that's all I have and all the best for your PSLE preparation. Okay, bye.